Hello, and welcome back. The topic for this video, now the virus we're gonna discuss is rabies. And the rabies virus is part of the Rhabdovirdae family of viruses. So it is a non-segmented, negative strand RNA virus, okay? So you've got one strand of RNA, it's not segmented, it's the negative strand, so when it gets into the cell, whether it be an animal or whether it be human, it um, needs to be converted in order to, for that virus to replicate inside of that eukaryotic cell, all right? Typically the host for rabies virus, this does not exist in the human population at any great level, all right, or any level really. Individuals who end up with rabies virus be, are, end up with the virus because they get bitten by an animal. Animals are the host typically for this virus. This is why you take your dogs and your cats to the vet to get a rabies vaccination. Because again, with viruses, the best treatment for viruses is prevention. It's vaccination, okay? So it's a non-segmented negative RNA virus. It is enveloped. So it does have a cell membrane around it. So it comes off via budding. And I'm gonna use blue, even though it's squeaky, I'm not gonna use a lot of blue, all right? The blue is gonna be our envelope. And the key with the um, rabies virus is it's got kind of a characteristic bullet shape that's associated with it. Within that bullet shape, we've got our RNA. There are also some uh, proteins that are associated with the RNA as well. I'm not worried about you knowing about those though, okay? And then on the outside that we'll do in pink, because I like having colors. You've got some glycoproteins. that are gonna be associated with it. And it's gonna be those glycoproteins that are gonna allow the virus to adhere and fuse with the eukaryotic cell to gain entry into the cell, okay? So that virus is um, endocytosed via a clathrin coated pit to be brought into the cell with transmission. of the rabies virus. It's primarily transmitted via saliva. So animal bites are the most common transmission associated with the rabies virus. And the thing that's a little bit different about the rabies virus is compared to some of the other viruses that um, we've talked about I almost never put 100% up there. And really, it isn't quite 100%. There are some documented individuals who have survived the rabies virus. Um, but if you do not get treated in time and you have been exposed to the rabies virus, you will die. What happens with the rabies virus is it infects um, the nervous system. And that's where it creates all of the problems associated with the rabies virus. If you've been, ever been around an animal that's rabid, they tend to be very aggressive, they tend to be um, very scared, um, they get very agitated, they'll drool a lot, they'll foam at the mouth. Those are all characteristics of rabies. In particular, it's a characteristic of um, furious rabies. 
There is also another form of rabies known as paralytic. Rabies. So we've got paralytic and we've got furious, okay? This is what you commonly think of. The furious one um, is the one that's commonly in the um, literature. Paralytic can also happen. Again, you tend to have muscle paralysis, goes along with the name. Also tends to result in coma for the individual or for the animal, okay? Furious, that's the one that goes along with the behavior issues like aggression um, and agitation or any kind of strange behavior that goes along with it. Really, there are those that propose that rabies was really kind of the incentive for describing things like zombies um, because the individual acted and moved so strangely, all right? Now, please don't take away from that that the rabies virus is a virus that creates zombies because, you know, while I love the zombie shows, zombies don't really exist in real life. But I can't let my husband hear that, okay? But it really kind of was the lore behind those types of things because there are so many behaviors, so many aggression um, issues associated with furious rabies, okay? So we've got the two types almost always fatal, all right? So you want to avoid that. What do you want to do to avoid it? After you are exposed to the rabies virus, the rabies vaccination is the treatment for it. Okay, if you are bit by an animal, it does help if the, you can collect the animal and the, if the animal can be tested to see if it has active rabies or not. Because you might have just been bitten by an animal that was scared because you were in its place or its area or disturbing it. If you can capture the animal, what they do is they test the brain material of that animal, so it is lethal for the animal, unfortunately. But if the animal comes back negative, you don't have to get the rabies vaccine. If the animal comes back positive, you most definitely do have to get the rabies vaccine. If the animal can't be captured or caught, you absolutely have to get the rabies vaccine, okay? Now, if you're talking about dogs here in the United States, risk of rabies here in the United States, getting that from a dog, fairly low. Other countries, fairly high. And the most common cause of rabies death is in children, and the most common bite associated with it is dog bites, okay? Here in the United States, because we're so diligent about vaccines and animals, or at least hopefully you're diligent about vaccines with your animals, um, rabies isn't as prevalent in the population, okay? But it is still prevalent in other animals, like raccoons, bats are another one that very commonly host the rabies virus. So if you're bitten by other animals, it almost always results in the rabies vaccine. Because what happens, that virus infects the central nervous system, once it gets into the central nervous system via the spinal cord, it goes to the brain. That's why you get all of the behavior um, issues associated with it, okay? But it's not only behavior. You've also got the foaming at the mouth that goes along with rabies. And what happens, the rabies virus itself actually increases your amount of saliva that's produced that betters the chance of the virus getting passed on to another animal or another host. Um, but also that goes along with that, it causes the um, throat to be sore so that the individual doesn't swallow as much. So you're making more spit and you're not swallowing it. That's what creates the foaming at the mouth, okay? Late in the game, 
associated with um, furious rabies is hydrophobia. Okay, and if we look at the name, you may remember this from um, intro bio and hydrophobic proteins. Hydrophobic, basically, they have a fear of water. And this is true in animals and humans. Just with humans, even mentioning water can trigger fear for them. Animals as well will stop drinking water when they're infected with the rabies virus. Okay, that goes along with the pathology associated with it. All right, um, hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, please let me know.